Welcome, fellow anglers, to the Working Class Fishing Podcast, a place for all anglers, amateur or expert, to share their stories and learn about fishing. Join your hosts, John and Brian, each episode as they debunk the perceived inaccessibility to fishing, break down the barriers of any and all angling methods, and hear stories from other anglers and their own journeys with fishing. Now, let's get this show started. Welcome back to another episode of the Working Class Fishing Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brian, and here is John Morris Esquire with a whole bunch of Roman numerals after his name with our sponsor. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This episode of Working Class Fishing is brought to you by Short Cure, Naughty Tackle, CD Fishing USA, Angry Rooster Fly Company, 317 Flies, Lid Rig, and an Adramus Fly Company. Make sure you check out all those awesome sponsors, get our discount codes if they have one, and make sure that you tell them that we sent you to them. So tonight, our very special guest is a good friend of ours. We've made friends with him over the last couple months. John actually was on his podcast talking about all of John's cool stuff that he does. And we wanted to introduce to our audience another podcast that you can listen to in between our episodes, and uh, he has some great stuff. This is Mr. Justin Lavelle. Justin is from Nova Scotia. Actually, uh, he'll he'll be able to fill you in. Now, don't let the <laughs> the accent throw you off too much. This guy, he's he's a good guy. He does the CB Fly Fishing School, which CB stands for Cape Breton, and he can explain a lot more about that. But he does the CB Fly Fishing School, the CB Fly Fishing Podcast, and he also does a little bit of TV work as well. He does some videos, but I'm going to let him talk about it. So Justin, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We're excited to have you here. Yeah, no, it's, it's good to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, man. I, I think we were pretty excited because John and I were like, we got to get Justin Lavelle on. We, we, we have our other buddy, Justin Carnes, 317 flies, but uh, you know, let's get, let's get Lavelle. And, and then we'll get Carnes and we'll, we'll get all this stuff organized. But it was like, let's get Justin on this week. Let's get the name out. Let's get the word out and, uh, you know, have you share a little bit about yourself and all that. So tell people about CB, you know, Cape Breton, CB fly fishing and all that kind of stuff. Well, it, you know, it started out as me just tying flies. Like, you know, I was a personal trainer before I ever, and a, and a weightlifter before I ever get into this stuff. So I got her prior to all this anyway so when i changed paths i guess you could say i uh i get into fly tying and fly fishing and the more i get into it the more i noticed that like there was a need like it was almost like a personal like someone going to the gym like can you train me you know what i mean show me the ropes so the more i get into tying flies i said geez you know what i'm gonna give this guiding thing to thing the world so i started out as levels flies and guiding service i know a boring name right <laughs> No. And as I, as it went on, it's, it's you know what uh, you know it's I needed to come up with something something different. So I said, you know what, like my overall plan is to have lodges, have people come here, have a little fly shop, have a school built right into the back of this place, and and teach it, and you know sell merchandise and that. So I said, CB Fly Fishing Schools, that's it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think I think what intrigues me, you you use the abbreviation CB, but Cape Breton, and and you're you're in Nova Scotia, this this very unique province in Canada. And uh, there again, a lot of people only know it. And we were talking about this before we started recording. People just know Nova Scotia from you know geography class, but you know, kind of historically speaking, in the fishing world and all that, Nova Scotia. What's the history? Because I've I've watched a lot of different documentaries on like the shipbuilders in Nova Scotia and the fishing industry and all that. But, you know, explain Nova Scotia to people because it's it's definitely not like the rest of Canada. No, it, it's not. It's, you know, we have the Cabot Trail here. And I think that's voted like number one or number two for the for the past couple of years as a, the best sport for the best vacation spot in the world kind of thing. But where I'm actually from, it's actually a fishing community and an old coal mining community. So the town that I'm in was actually built on coal miners and lobster fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so a lot of, a lot of saltwater fishing. You're sticking to the streams yeah. though. You know, that's, that's kind of your thing and, and hitting the trout. Well, 
Well, no, you know, I fish the Bador Lakes. Now, that this is this a big estuary where everything just pours into this monster, right? And uh, so, like, I started out there, but I kind of got, me personally, I kind of got boring with it. Like, I wanted to, I wanted to get in the rivers and I wanted to learn the bugs and the different things like that, right? So I kind of, and I didn't, I, I don't stop fishing the Bador Lakes. That's what it's called. I, I continue to fish them, but. The river's really grown on me. I find I can learn a lot more and what's what's going on rather than this. You know, if you're coming to Cape Breton, bring bring shrimp flies. That's that's all you need if you're fishing the Bador Lakes, right? Because they'll they'll take it. It doesn't matter what color really. Orange is the best, but they will take another color, right? Yeah. So so you're doing lake fishing, stream fishing, all that kind of stuff. So so the unique thing with here is uh if we're having a windy day on the lake, which is salt water, two minute drive, you're in the stream, you're you're in the river, you're in the middle river, half hour from there, maybe you're in the marguerite. So you got your option if you want to fish rainbow in the salt and with brookies or even brown trout or codfish even or striped bass in this one lake, you can. Weather's crap, you head on over to the middle river, you can still fish for brown, rainbow and brookies, right? You just, you just need a different size or different rate weight rod with you like so when i'm fishing here i always tell people go with an eight weight you know you're not you're not going to need it for the big mass of fish but what you want it for is because there's always a breeze on the lake right so you want to be able to push when you're cast you want to be able to cast through that wind so i an eight weight for that and a four or five weight for the for the river okay i yeah the the, the, go ahead john i was gonna say that makes sense to me I mean, in, in shrimp flies, let's just say if it, if it were a shrimp fly, for instance, you know, that that's not exactly the most uh, air resistant fly in the world, but it, it's it's not the hardest to cast, but it's probably not the easiest either, you know? So I, no, in, no, it's pretty easy to cast me. And like, it's, I'm talking like a size six stream or size eight. They're, they're relatively small, right? Gotcha, gotcha. And so you showed me some of these. These are, I mean, like truly saltwater shrimps. You know, and if you like, uh, if you look at, uh, I don't know, like Coast Fly or Arex Hooks or any of these guys, and you're looking at their socials, I mean, these, these are the kinds of flies that Justin's tying up and that catch the fish there. That blew my mind because he said lakes. The first, when I went on Justin's podcast, we were talking about fishing. I don't know if it was before, during, or after. I don't remember, but we were talking about, he said, you know, the lakes. Yeah, I was like, oh, so freshwater stuff. And he's like, uh, well, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do, we do have some freshwater lakes up here, too. And, like, we have some man-made lakes and stuff like that. And they, and they stock them. like, So the Bador Lakes, the rainbows are, I'm going to say, 90% farmed fish that escape. I mean, some guys will argue with me and say, no, it's only 10. It's definitely a high rate of farmed fish, right? So you guys have, uh, uh, when you're saying farm, those are hatchery fish. Uh, I think, I think when, when I'm saying farm, like I think they take them and sell them to the grocery store. Oh, okay. So these are the, yeah. the, like, they're raised in rainbow they're trout. They're mutinated. Oh, yeah, okay. they're mutinated. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> so you got rainbow trout. The people are like, oh, I want to have rainbow trout for dinner tonight. They go down <laughs> the store and they buy these big, you know, brood stock triploid rainbow trout and the little, you know, styrofoam thing wrapped up. And that's the fish you're going after. And, but then then our brookies are, are native to us, right? So mm-hmm. you can get some big, we call them speckles up here. I don't know if you guys ever heard that term down there. Speckle trout uh-huh. is what we call them. So for us, We've got speckled trout, like actual, actual, actual speckled trout. Well, I say actual, I don't mean that as like to discredit what you're saying. I mean, no, like no. That's, that's, that's what they're, uh, that's what they're called is, is speckled trout. And they're really cool, but I've never heard a brookie called that, but I could see why it would be called that. Yeah. You know, and you know what? I hate using terms like that, but some people get upset when I say speckled trout. What's a speckled trout? A brook trout. Well, you know, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I mean, but people call like fall fish, like ghost trout and stuff like that. You know, every, every, every geographical location has their own um, vernacular for fish, like rockfish here in the South. People call them rockfish, but they're not rockfish, they're striped bass. But that's what they call them as rockfish, you know. So the whole time I'm growing up, they're like, "Oh yeah, it's 
state record rockfish came out of this reservoir. It's like, oh, that's cool. And then I get older, I'm like, that's a striped bass. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the funny thing is, like when I first got into fly fishing, like because this was all gibberish to me, right? Like I didn't know, you know, I knew about trout and that was it. But then, like one day, I caught this thing that and it had stripes on it. And anyway, I guess they they made a miracle comeback up here, like because they were almost on the endangered list. And I think I think there was like over a million and some just sitting. I forget what the where they were just sitting there. I guess just waiting to move, and it was crazy. So we're, ha we're having a lot of problem with them, I think, too. Like, you know, now our fish, our fishing has been terrible the last last year, year and a half. Like, for I don't know if it's from from the uh, global warming or from the species of other fish coming in because our waters are getting warm now. Like, it's I mean, the fishing's good. But it's not as good as what it used to be. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's that's happening everywhere, man. That's that is a hundred percent happening everywhere, and I, I hate to, I hate that that's happening everywhere. But that's just kind of how it is. Well, it's like for example, it's January here in Canada, especially Cape Breton. Like we should be out with like snowsuits on right now, and our grass is still green. We don't even have any snow. Like I could go out and cut my grass tomorrow. Wow. Whoa. That's not something you hear somebody from Canada say typically, I, and especially in, in your geographic location, the Northeast United States, Southeastern Canada. That's, that's, you should have nor'easters and big blowing snowstorms. Yep. And you know what? Last year it was, last year it was somewhat the same. It was just a little bit colder, but not a whole lot of snow. But like this is, we're heading into February, buddy. We should be up to our waist in snow right now. Yeah. <laughs> and like, no, nope, you know, you can walk like this evening before when I was talking to you, I ran up to the store and I went with no jacket on, just a t-shirt and my, you know, my pants, whatever. It, it was fine. It was nice and nice. Out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's unreal because there again, just knowing, uh, you know, the parallels and, and Canadian weather systems and everything else. I mean, all of our bad weather in the United States and uh, in the Midwest and the, and the South, like going down to John, it all pours through Canada. So logically thinking, you know, and even in the Northeast, when we get the Nor'easters and the lake effect snow, that should still be hitting you uh, geographically speaking, but it's just not materializing. It's like, there's, there's something going on where, you know, here in the desert Southwest in California, they have torrential flooding and rains. They were completely like an extreme drought and it's starting to reverse. It's like, what's going on here? Well, you know, now that you say that it's, we've been getting like hurricane warnings, like forever now, like keeping an eye on the system like, hurricane in January, like, but it's funny. Cause I remember my grade eight science teacher, he always said like, we may not see it in our lifetime, he said. You may just see it coming on the end of it, but we're eventually going to get Florida's weather, and Florida will eventually get our weather. It's going to change, and it's, you know, you're in grade eight. It's like, what do you know, me? And, and now I'm 35 looking back, and I, it's just funny how that one thing that he said stuck in my head. Like, I remember as if it was yesterday because it's happening. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Uh, you know, kind of going back to the fish thing, your fish, uh, the – do your striped bass migrate out of salt water there? Uh, I, I'm just curious to know, or are they landlocked like where John grew up? I, I think I don't quote me on it. I'm not a big striped fisherman guy, but I think they migrate salt water. Okay, so they're anadromous then, um, and and we have that's that's our primary target species where I'm from, and I think that there are some species like where down in the south with John that, that are anadromous, but I. They're, they're just not pro as prolific as like Atlantic salmon or, you know, uh, Pacific steelhead or one of the five Pacific salmon species. But anytime the ocean warms, runs go in the toilet. It's like the fish got to go way further out. They're, they're more susceptible to heavy predation. You know, orcas, that's one thing that gets on them. Uh, you know, uh, seals, walruses, all this other stuff. So they become more susceptible because they're trying to find food. They're looking for herring and alewives and shrimp and all this other stuff it seems to go mm -hmm. with a warming ocean that, that the fish runs decline. And then you get like the El Nino La Nina thing and it flops. And then the fishing goes red hot during those transition phases where the ocean gets cooler. But if you're experiencing, you know, green grass in January in Canada, that's a pretty telltale. I'll, sign. Say, I'll take a picture for you tomorrow. I'll take a picture and I'll send it to you tomorrow of like 
say not last year, the year before to this year, and you're going to go, oh my God, this is crazy. But, you know, back to your saying about the whole water heating up and everything, like, and I'm not saying we never did, but like our waters, like our, our harbors and that are full of great white sharks now. Really? Wow. We never, and like, and they're just washing up dead, some of them, like just come, you know, and then we always had seals here, but like this past year, I've noticed it was the worst for like, seals everywhere like i was fishing one day and you always get that eerie feeling something's watching you right so i didn't see not one i seen about five or six seals just like well there's why i'm not catching nothing right you know yeah oh it just goes with with the territory i don't know if you guys have sea lions there uh or not we have sea lions in the west and they, they'll come clear up the rivers and they chase the fish up the rivers and they've actually got to the point where the sea lions have got so bad I'm actually going to a meeting tonight after the podcast and we're going to be talking to a uh, sea lion mitigation manager from our Department of Fish and Wildlife um, that they, they are taking them and killing them. They got permits from the uh, federal government from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in NOAA because they're having such a heavy impact on um, native fish uh, when they get them pinned up before they move up fish ladders over dams and obstacles and all that to kill them. Uh, and, and that was going on real hot and heavy. And after they took out, a, I think they've taken out somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, five to 800 so far total over like a 10 year time span, our, our fish runs have flourished, but then we'll have a bad ocean year and we'll have a ton of sea lions. And then the sea lions are starting to attack the resident fish in the river. So they're going after white sturgeon. They're going after, I mean, they'll go after bass, whatever they can get a hold of they're, they're eating. But, you know, if you're seeing seals and, and they're like out having a good old time, yeah, fishing's going to suck. Yeah, it wasn't, like I said, and I even, I didn't even do a whole lot of guiding. Like people were calling me this summer, like, you know what, I don't want to take your money because I know what's going to happen right now. It's, it's not a good time to come here. Like, but we don't mind, but I, I do though, right? Like I do, because you're, you're paying money. You want, you know, nothing's guaranteed in fishing anyway but you want to make sure that person you know that's their hard-earned dollar you want to make sure they have a good time a remember a memorable memorable time that's cape breton accent kicking in again right <laughs> tripping over my words <laughs> but you know so you know, i had to I had to turn a few people down i just it, i couldn't do it right it's it's it was too hot the fish weren't there it's but I, i'm just being honest right i mean yeah. you know if i want to yeah yeah send me some money but like i can't do that right like so i want to be honest and upfront with everything if someone calls you know i get calls all the time asking about fishing and i give my my honest opinion to it right i'm not saying it's right by any means you know but yeah but so, oh go ahead brian no go ahead john i was just gonna say so how does that work for um like guiding there is there like a lot of licensing that has to go on and i'm only asking because it's kind of a some states in the u.s it's it's a fucking pain to get your guides license and then no, others it, um like texas is super simple no i know I mean you know what like you can go take the the, the course in person or you can write the, the national exam online and like, you don't even need a guide when you're coming to Cape Breton. That, that's the thing. Like you guys can come up tomorrow, buy your non-residential license when the season open and go fishing yourself. You know what I mean? But it, it, it yeah. helps having a guide because you're paying for the knowledge, right? Exactly. You know, I, I've seen it before. People come here and bring flies that I'm not saying no fly. Like I said, I never seen a fish float around with a with a fly book in its hand like, checking the patterns and make them <laughs> oh no that's the other states i can't eat that that's not a canadian fly <laughs> <laughs> well i think i think it goes without saying uh when you're talking about brookies um or or speckles like, like what you guys are uh used to calling the fish uh you're talking about a predatory char species so does does uh, a cape breton brookie change from appalachian strain brookie to one of our brook trout in the West that are actually not even native to this, you know, they were brought out here from your area and dumped in the rivers because it's, it's fun to catch brook trout. They're aggressive. You know, is it going to really change that much? Right. I know it's, it's, it, and you know, I see online too, like, you know, new people getting into fishing and they'll watch this guy fishing, like from wherever, whatever country he's from. And 
you know, and they might come out and try. I'm not saying it's not going to work neither, but like you, you don't have to be like a, a sniper approaching the, the river to go fishing, right? Like you, you can talk a little bit too. And see, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> that, that's just my opinion. Like you see some of them coming up over the, over the hill. And it's like, okay, what, what's going on here? And like, shh, shh. And I'm like, okay, okay. Is there like a, be- a bear or something coming or like, no, no, we're going to sneak up on it. Okay, calm down here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now we're not we're not fishing gin clear water for uh you know steelhead or something like that where you got a really spooky fish you know something that's just gonna blast out and disappear uh you know I, that's that's the cool part of trout fishing is is that you you can be a bit obnoxious with trout I mean I know some people are like oh we got to sneak up and crawl up and all that uh it, but I mean they're trout come on they're they're gonna kind of move over and then they're gonna be like oh food boom, and they eat it you know as long as they're mm-hmm. juiced up enough their metabolism's up and they want to eat you know there's certain times a year you can't keep them off the hook and then there's other times no. where you work all day for one yeah i'll listen this summer like won't leave to me to start like trying to get a tv show going in the worst summer of the year right <laughs> that, that that's me hello i'm justin <laughs> <laughs> well your tv show uh you know i mean that that I watched a couple episodes of that on YouTube. I was like, damn, you, either there's a lot of editing going on or you guys were really popping fish left and right. You know, you had a couple there where you were like, you know, you're working this section of the river and uh, anybody that fishes knows it's not easy to work sections of river. You're fighting current, you're walking over stuff, you got brush, you got all that, but you're working these sections of river and you're like, okay, there's going to be a fish over there. And you, and you floated a dry, like right over this brook and it came up, smashed it. There was like one scene there. And then you threw a streamer and that thing got eight. And I was like, dude, this is cool. He's not like, oh, the majestic, you know, elk hair caddis, you know, it, it's like, I'm going to throw shit and I'm going to catch fish. Listen, I'm, I'm Kate Bratney and I'm a Kate Bratner, right? And I, and I try, and like before I was, I was t- before we started, ever started like talking about doing a podcast together, I like, that's me. That's who I am. You're getting, I can't be like this professional. Yes. I have like standards. Obviously you gotta be up to par with, but I can't, I make a fool out of myself when I try to sound professional, right? I'll get trip over my words and say, you know what? Just, just, let's just forget about it. How you doing? My name's Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that's so, the cool part. It's authentic. Well, so for the first little while, those TV shows, like I was trying to be something that I was in, like this big professional, whatever. And it's like, this ain't me. Like this, this ain't me at all. So you know what? I'm just the next one we're doing, the next two or a couple that we were doing, I'm just going to be me. And that's it. Like funny, you know, whatever. Like I said, in one part, I said, you know, you don't ever want to smack the river. I said, when you're fishing or smack the water, when you're fly, when you're fishing, because you're going to spook the fish. So. My next cast, what did I do? I smashed the water and, and bang, I got a fish, right? Like, not saying it's wrong, but not saying it's right either. <laughs> it could work. You know, I mean, it I works. Get, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think John and I, I, I've, I've smashed into the water with so much crap, you know, trying to fling out a Euro jig or something. It's just like, you're, you're like, God, damn, you know, you throw it, you know, cause you, you're just not getting it to thread out. And then, then you really hurl it and it's like, Ooh, I got a good cast out of that. So, like, so you spin uh, fish, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. What, what was that, John? Oh no, I was just going to say, dude, that, I think that's probably why I like fishing streamers so much is because it's not delicate at all. It's I'm punching this line out <laughs> and I'm getting the fly where I want it and I'm going to fish it. And it doesn't matter if it's really loud because those are not the fish I'm going for. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like spin fishers, like they had, you know, you guys have the, the weighted, the weight of flies, you know, the line rather than the lures, they splash water and you still catch fish. So why can't, you know, why can't a, why can't a fly fisherman do the same thing, right? The, that's the whole thing is that like, you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, somebody's like, oh, you smacked the water. That's no good. Dude, I'll go bomb a two fifths ounce spoon through six inches of water and blow a trout up. If I cast it upstream. And it splashes there and, and that's fish spooks. By the time it's in its walk going down through the run, there's going to be a fish that's like food, bang, and it blows it up. It's not that fish I want up there. It's the fish that's down here. You know, you're talking well, two different like ends of me. the perspective. Like when I'm casting in front of me, like when I said about that, you know, I'm going to cast here and there's going to be a fish right there. But like, I don't care if I'm casting upstream and I smack the water because that's not my strike zone. I want my strike zone to be in that area where I said, this is where I'm going to fish. That's where I kind of like, okay, the, the flies in the water or on the water, whatever you're fishing, 
now I can, everything's settled. Now I can mess around a bit with it. Right. Yeah. John, there's a video that you made. Uh, and I don't know if we ever put it, maybe you did put it up, but John was down below the spillway where he fishes for gar and he, he gets a couple really good hauls off the riprap and he throws the, the streamer out there right in front of the gar and you see it and it goes splash. Well, what's that gar do? It, it kicks around. It's like, huh? And, and it starts going for that fly. I mean, you could see it plain as day. If I were, yeah. sorry. No, go ahead, man. I didn't know you were going to say, say something. Dude, yeah, I was just going to say, dude, if I wouldn't have stripped that fly so aggressively off of that fish, it would have ate. I didn't know that because I didn't have a camera. And I couldn't talk to the guy that had the camera. So um, that was that was no good. Justin, I'll have to send you that. Like. That was uh that was pretty cool. It was. Yeah. Do you, do you, did you say you had a video of it? Do you, do you, yeah. do you still got the video? I'll have to yeah, uh, okay. have to get you to send me the link to it or send me a yeah, dude, absolutely. Dude, if you ever make it to Texas, you've got a place to stay right here. And then we'll, well, that, we'll you know, that goes the same for you guys, you know, like like I said, be, like when I had you on the podcast, that's the first time I really met you. Then I got introduced to uh, Brian and you guys kind of took me underneath your wing yourselves and you don't really, you know, and, and I appreciate that. You don't really know me, you know, you know, but so I thank you guys. Well, we get, we get to know everybody and we get to know everybody, whether it's through the podcast, through our social media interactions, whatever, and, you know, like I said, uh, same thing with you coming out here you know, uh, you can always feel welcome to come out here. And, and we always try to do that, you know, and I think it's important for us to all share our fisheries and our experiences together. Like, like I said, with what you're doing, you're not just having, you know, Canadian guests on your show. You're also getting American guests and, you know, you just had Kelly Gallup on, uh, the same time we had Kelly Gallup on and, you know, but, <laughs> I know. It, 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 but it's cool because it's like, you have a different perspective on Kelly than what we did. And we had a different perspective than our friends over with SVS did. And some of these other podcasts, you know, everybody thinks that Kelly Gallup is like Mr. Sex Dungeon and, you know, all this other stuff. We ended up talking to him more about bass fishing and conventional fishing and then nasty freezers and stuff. And you ended up talking to him about bodybuilding. I mean, it's like Kelly can yeah, talk right. to I anybody. And it, that's the yeah. whole thing. I mean, that's why he's so successful in his business and what he does is that he has a personality and the ability that he can connect with anybody out there. But that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, within our fishing community, our podcast community, everything else, there's some people that are like really competitive and it's like their club. You know, that's, that's not our style. Our style is, it's like, you got a cool fishery where you're at. I'd love to come to Nova Scotia. Just, just to say like, yeah, I'm taking a vacation to Nova Scotia. Where, you know, just to blow people away. It's like, yeah, it's, you know, an island off the East coast of Canada. You know, they got, they got good fishing. They got cool <laughs> culture. It, it's like, you know, I mean, it, and that's the whole thing. It, it's a place to go and do something different, but it's cool to have friends there. No, for sure. And like, you know, the invite's always there for you guys to, to come on up this way. It, 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 the reason I like, like I said, back to like podcasting, that's the reason why I get into the, the podcast. And again, it was kind of like, let's hear everyone's story. Let's let's hear your thoughts on fish and why, like we were talking with smack in the water with flies and, you know, it's just different things like that. And and I, and I tried getting on a, on a few uh, podcasts when I first started out and, was, eh, you know, Maybe, you know, maybe I'm not interested enough. So I said, you know, I'll start my own. Mm -hmm. It's my show. These are my questions kind of thing. And I'm going to do, do whatever. I want to hear feedback from people as, you know, what they want to hear. And sometimes, most times I don't even have any questions being out. I just, hey, listen, do you want to do a podcast? <laughs> okay, perfect. What are we talking about? I don't know yet, but I'll talk to you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we just go from there. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Like a hundred, a hundred million percent. That is the best way to do it. Well, I look at it as too, like, you know, big names, like say Kelly Gallup, like someone's maybe have a question and they're, and they're nervous to ask the guy, like maybe they don't want to ask them and then they just, they give up on it or they walk away from fishing. I want, you know, you get these big names and, and not, they don't even have to be big names, just anybody. It's like, well, geez, he was on Justin's podcast or he was on your guy's podcast. I'm going to reach out to him and, ask them a question or something. Right. So basically networking, I guess you could say, right. 
it, it yeah. is but i think i think once people are able to listen to other people especially on podcasts it gives you you know depending on how the podcast goes and all that stuff it really gives you an idea of who that person is and you know more about that person i think you do a really good job of that by the way justin i really like your format and i really love your podcast and uh i just i I think that's there's a lot to it because uh, i know that sounds probably stupid but like even when i was calling kelly to get him on the podcast i i i kept you know like second guessing like oh shit what am i gonna say you know because like i have this guy's books like like I don't have an actual shrine, but you know, like huge, yeah, influence, no, I know. you know, but like huge influence to me as a fly tire. And I was like, well, what if I fuck this up? What if I say something wrong? But I think, you know, people being able to hear all these different sides of all these other guests, uh, it makes it a lot more approachable. And I think, especially with social media now, that people mm-hmm. feel more comfortable reaching out and talking to folks. And, you know, I I don't worry about so much messing up or saying something wrong anymore because surely someone's going to say, hey, you said that wrong or, oh, you know what? You're right. You can correct. I just we're all human. Me and at the end of the day. Right. Like it, this is like these podcasts are just just a fun thing to do. Right. Like they're, you know, I I don't worry about that stuff. And, you know, you're going to get the haters and all that other jazz. And and I get it. Right. It's, It's it's that's your opinion. That that's cool. Like. I won't bad mouth you because I got no reason to, and I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Th- there's always going to be people that, and, and, and John and I have seen this come and go over the last three years. So much. There's always somebody that's really like pumped out of the gate, like fly by, you know, they're, they're fly by night people eventually. But there's somebody pumped out of the gate. They're like, yeah, I want to make this happen. And it's got to happen right now. And I'm putting all this energy in. And they have a lot of good, positive energy. And sometimes that, that energy can, you know, get on us. And it's like, hey, you know, this guy seems like he's got it going. You know, can he keep the momentum of the energy? And then it just kind of goes and, and it crashes. And, you know, that's that's one thing about the podcasting thing. Number one, the reason you started your podcast, absolutely awesome. Because... The thing about it is, is that we start podcasts to basically have our own little voice in the community, but we also have the ability to give voices to people that wouldn't normally have the opportunity to have that voice in the community. So there's, there's a kind of a twofold. We, you know, we're not regulated by FCC and all this other stuff, you know, not to go off the fishing track too much, but we start these fishing podcasts because we love to fish and we love to share about fishing and we have a whole bunch of different perspectives, but there's, there's groups of people that are like, this is my format and this is what I'm going to do. And blah, 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 you know, and, and, and so they got this whole like idea of like, you know, this fan fame and stardom and we get all the emails from all like, Oh, Oh, five tips to improve your podcast, all this other stuff. But at a certain point, And I think, I think like, you know, you start to hit this, you kind of hit the Zen level where it's like, we're going to talk to people. We're going to put it out there. Either people are going to listen to it or they're not going to listen to it. But the cool part that, that, uh, you know, is fun about the fishing thing is, is that there is so many different ways people fish and so many different river systems. There's millions of rivers, millions of lakes, millions of bodies of salt water, you know, that, that are interconnected and do all this stuff that there's so many different ways to fish that how can we say like, well, well, Justin, I don't like the way that you fish for brook trout, or I don't like that you call them speckle trout because in the South, a speckle trout's a sea trout or, you know, some, you know, some kind of saltwater fish or, you know, I don't like them, you know, or it, it, it's like, you know, it'd be like me getting offended when you say I hate salmon, <laughs> you know, and, and that's like <laughs> our main thing. What, yeah. what, what, what difference does it make? You know, I, I don't expect everybody to like salmon and steelhead fishing, you know, I mean, I love doing it, but. I don't expect everybody to like it. I, I was called a sadomasochist for going after steelhead. You know, this guy was like, you have to be a sadomasochist to go after winter steelhead. And I told my friend that, and he was like, well, that's a really bizarre thing. Something's wrong with that guy. <laughs> I was yeah, like, no. I think he was drinking a lot in his float tube when he said that. <laughs> I actually picked one of them up last year. They were uh, a, drunk guy a, or a, a float tube. 
<laughs> I, I look I look like Bowser off a of Mario Kart. You ever play that video game here? <laughs> like jacked up and trying to kick and I'm going around in a circle. Oh, it, was, it was a mess. It was a mess. Terrifying. <laughs> do, you, do you have those sweet uh, yep. those sweet uh, flippers though? Flippers. Do you use flippers or are you just Oh no, I gotta use the flippers. Like I'm one of these guys, like, okay, no, I'm I'm doing this. Like, give me the flippers and yeah, like they were no good. Me and they were coming off in the water and uh oh, what a mess. What a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I I my my only float tube story was it wasn't a float tube, but my wife and I went on like um Craigslist at the time. You guys got Craigslist up there, don't you? Used yeah. marketplace. Yeah. Okay. So I, I thought you did, but we're, we're not that back with the times now. Well, no, I, I didn't know if it was, <laughs> no, if it wasn't Craig, it was Jim's list or something in Canada. I, you know, it, it was like, you know, <laughs> we'll talk about Kmart later anyways. So we went on <laughs> Craigslist. Got a Kmart now. No, we don't have them anymore. You guys yeah, but do. You know, you know what we no, don't we have don't. Oh. We don't have, we don't have fucking Tim Hortons and we don't have Tim bits. So that's, oh true. no, I'll see that. Yeah, no, I'm gonna have to send you some. It's you, everyone has to have Tim's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, so uh, you you have Canadian Craigslist. So, anyways, uh, this was on American <laughs> Craigslist, <laughs> and so my wife finds these two caddis uh, pontoons, right? And they and they're meant to be used with flippers. I'm like, dude, those are so cool. They ride so high in the water. I didn't realize how like sketchy those were, and I was like, hey, let's blow these up and go float down the river in them. Never used them before. Dude, we're like hanging on like the Titanic. Like we're going down like a class two plus rapid in skinny water. I'm sitting on, I'm like, no, you know? And like, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. And I got those stupid plastic flippers they came with. So I, I learned really quick. I mean, it's summertime. It's a hundred degrees out. We're floating down the river. This is what we do for fun in the summer in the West. We just go do stupid stuff and try not to kill ourselves. Then we go bombing down this river. My wife's like, I'm never using this damn thing again. You know, I was like, Hey, I, it wasn't that bad. It's better than a tire to, you know, inner tube, you know, cause yeah. that's normally what we used as kids. She's like, I'm not using this thing. I'd rather die in it. Like a, like a unicorn <laughs> floater, you know, something like that. Anyways. Yeah. Float tubes are sketchy. I, I picked up a, a, a little one man raft and that's a heck of a lot safer. Put on the waders, put on the life jacket, sit in there, row around the lake, you know, put out the woolly bugger and tow it. And it's all good. Well, you know, and that's the thing. They are sketchy. Cause like, I'm not, I'm not a small guy neither, but I mean, like when I sat in the thing, I just like, whoop, like it went like, like, is this going to hold me? Like, am I going to have to get out there? Like what's going to go on here? So my friend's just looking at me. Like I spent more time spinning in circles than I did fishing. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't grasp it. Like I was, I was done at the end. Like, you're going to have to roll me in me. And like, I'm done. I'm tapped. Like <laughs> either leave me here or roll me in because I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the, the saga of the float tube. I, I just, uh, the idea of wearing it like a diaper too. The, some, sometimes that's just that, that dog don't hunt for me. Yeah, no. And, and like the more I got out there and the deeper I got out there, I'm like, might be a shark around here. I mean, you know, and I can't do nothing. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like I'm tapped. Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> oh, well, you know, what, what can you do? I guess go down with the ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Such a bleak outlook. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm done. I'm tapped. Right. Uh, that's it. I'm, <laughs> when I say I'm done with something and I'm tapped, that, that, that means I gave it my all. Like I'm done. <laughs> like I can't give anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you have any kind of boat or anything like that? I did, but I, I had a small John boat, but I sold it because it was, it was where I hurt my back when I was a, a competitive power lifter and uh, I got rid of it. It was just too much trying to haul it around. And so it was just sitting there. So I, I let it go for like next to nothing. No. Yeah, but I didn't know. That, <clears throat> that said, hey, I want to know about your professional bodybuilding career. Oh, no, I, I wasn't a bodybuilder. I was, I was a weightlifter. Power lifter. <laughs> so, you know, six pack <laughs> hey, on hey, me, man. buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, to me, it's the same thing. All right. But no, but, but, but in all seriousness, I would love to know more about that. I think that's really interesting. And um, I mean, if you don't mind going into it, like, how'd you get yeah, hurt? No. Well, how I got it originally got into the whole gym thing is, and, you know, junior high, going into high school, I was bullied really bad. Like, like, I mean, bad, like 
and I wasn't a big guy at the time either, right? So an easy target for people, I guess. So, you know, grade 10, it was my grade 10 year starting high school. You know, I took a smack in the face from somebody. It's like, I can't do three years of this anymore. Like, you know, this is supposed to be my time. Like my, you know, we're getting older, you know, going to graduate in another two years. So I went and joined the gym. So I was this scrawny little punk walking up these stairs and I heard like bang, bang. And at the time I didn't drive. So I'm like, on the cell phone with my mother, like, come back, come get me. They're nuts in here. Like, I can't do this. <laughs> and she more or less said, well, deal with it because you're there now, right? So, so anyway, I uh, I get into it and I start lifting weights. And then I got offered to do a Strami, an Atlantic Canada Strami competition. I was only 18 at the time. By this time, anyway, uh, and like a lot of these guys were like 30s and 40s, so I was the youngest, the youngest guy in there, and I just got hooked with it. I, I got obsessed with it. I wanted to be the strongest. So one thing led to another, and you know, strami and really wasn't for me. So I got into powerlifting. You know, your squat, your bench, your deadlift. So I did that for years. Uh, like I said, I started when I was 15. I got hurt when I was 27. I was so my goal was to squat 800 in a competition one time. So I always pushed the envelope a little bit and. I tried going, I just wanted to go 850 just to get the feel for it. And I fell with it. And that's what ended me. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude. Ooh, that's a lot of weight. That's almost that's, a half ton. Yeah. I, I tripped like my, my, I guess I got two left feet. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, w- it was a cool thing though. Like, you know, everyone like running off of treadmills and everything. Cause like I shut her down, buddy. When that happened, like bang, right <laughs> this gym, like, shut her down. <laughs> That is yeah. so much weight. I mean, uh, 850 pounds, like I said, thousand pounds is a half ton. So you're a, only 150 shy of a half ton. And and here's the thing, like when I used to do like strong training, I would run like a hundred feet with 600 pounds on my back, like in, in a squat, like a fucking, super right? yoke. Yeah. Yeah. You that's know, a quarter ton. For, car- for, for, for cardio, I'd pull an 18 wheeler in a foreign parking lot. That That would be my cardio, right? Jeez. I, I'm just thinking of like a Ford Ranger is only rated. The older ones are only rated to carry about six to 800 pounds in the bed safely. And you're carrying <laughs> that on your body. And then, and then, you know, but like there's days me and I feel like I'm about 80 years old, <laughs> oh. you know, it's, it's my back is gone. Like, I mean, I had fun doing it, you know, and if any younger guys that come up and say, Hey, listen, like, could, do you mind? And yeah, sure. I, I don't lift anymore, but I don't mind. It's like fishing. I don't mind helping people, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, but yeah, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say so you got hurt. And is that, is after that, is that kind of when the whole fly fishing thing got started? Yeah, so idle hands are the devil workshop, right? So I needed to do something. How do you walk away with something that you're still really good at, but you can't do it anymore? So I was like, I was very, I got very depressed from it. Like, because that's all I did from the 15 to 27. Like, that's all I knew was the gym and weightlifting. That, that's it. <laughs> so, and it was funny because everyone kind of laughed at me when I, when, when I went out and bought this kit and fly tying kit. And they're like, you know, I'm I'm still pretty big, right? Like everyone's like this big jacked up guy. And you're going to try like, you know, time flies. My biggest out of all my weightlifting stuff, my biggest accomplishment was tying. Like, I think it was a size 18 caddis pattern. I, I take that over like (laughs) lifting a truck or squat (laughs) or anything. I did it without snapping the thread. (laughs) Wow. That's a, I mean, that's a small fly. So that's a good accomplishment. Well, I say size 18. It was probably like a 14, right? I mean, you got to give a little too. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I competed all over Nova Scotia, Canada. I went to South Africa. I placed fifth in the world there for juniors. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I mean, just to go travel that much and do what you were doing, that's super cool. And compete I- in fucking worlds, dude. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, well, you deal. know, to me, it's... I never give myself any credit. I always set myself up for failure. Is it like I can't even now that I'm out of there and it's like I'm looking back, I still fifth place is nothing, you know. I fifth place is nothing. Nobody remembers who's fifth, you know, you know, nobody remembers who's fourth. That that was that was my mentality then. Like, you know, two's not a winner and three nobody remembers, right? So 
that that was my mentality back then. So I always beat myself up over it, right? If I didn't get first, but then I looked at it too. You learn very little from victory, right? But you learn a lot from defeat. So that's when I come back home and I, and I trained hard. Like I trained my ass off and like I started like blowing up with numbers and then got to the point, like I said, I was getting ready. To, I was going to squat 800 in a meet. So in the gym, I went, I went 850 just to have that extra confidence booster and I trip walking backwards and welcome to CB fly fishing, I guess. <laughs> so how is... I mean, how has fly fishing impact your life? I mean, I know you're a guide and uh, I know you're doing all this really awesome stuff, but how, how did it really impact your life? What was that, that fascination? What drew you to it? It changed me because like growing up, I never, I never had anyone to do guy things with me, even as a kid. Like, you know, I never really had anyone to show me how to do man things. So it was a big deal, man, going out and buying a fly rod on your own. <laughs> like, I, I didn't know what I was doing. It, 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 it actually made me grow up. I know it sounds like silly and everything, but it actually made me grow up more, like get more connected with nature and, you know, see things that I would never see. Because, I, like I said, like, I wasn't even going to go to my graduation because the gym had me so tied up. Like, I'm not going. I got to go train legs at like 530. I ain't got time for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah no it de yeah it definitely changed me like you know and when people say like this is my story you know this saved me i, I understand what they're saying right like it, it def it definitely helped me because like i said i was i was i was getting in a depress uh depression you know like i said you're still good at something but you're done now and you're not ready to be done yeah, you know, that that whole competitive thing, I, I can totally relate to it. Because yeah, the when when you get into like a competitive sport, uh, you know, and I did trail running and long distance running and stuff like that, not as a professional, I was never a professional, but as an amateur, I'd get really competitive over it. And man, my training schedule, it just, it, it, it really starts to brutalize you uh, physically and mentally It is so demanding especially when you're planning like a trail 50k and you're like i gotta go run like five trainers before i go run this and you're running 33 34 miles i mean you're just shredding your body to pieces well you, you don't have a social life anymore like the the, the little bit of friends that i did have i kind of had to shut them out because this is what i'm doing at a young age this is what i wanted to be and you know i'd go out on dates like girls be pissed me when i say can you take me home at like eight o'clock because i have to go to bed because i have to get up and train chess the next morning and i really want to max out i really want to bench three plates you know, you know? Yeah. so can you take me home now please and well that's where that's where it goes though competitively is is to that that's that's like taking it to the next level like serious competition i mean going from that competitiveness to the fly fishing though how how has your perspective changed with this because I, I can guarantee you the, the Justin we're talking to right now is not the same Justin that got, you know, on the bench and under the barbell. You know, I'm not the, I look at it as I'm not the, the greatest at fly cast and I'm not the greatest at fly time. You know, I was really good at something at one time and it takes a lot of work to get there and a lot of work to stay at that level and to move beyond that level. So I look at it, this is just fishing. I'm having fun with it. I don't care if someone says your flies are garbage or your podcast is garbage, whatever. I'm having fun with it. I'm enjoying something and it's keeping me out of trouble, right? Hell yeah. <clears throat> you know, it, like I said to people, like, don't, like, if someone's bad mouthing, like, you know, your flies this or don't, don't worry about it. Do you. If it makes you happy, you go fish it. Mm -hmm. You know? If it makes you happy, you post it on it. I don't care what anyone's saying. That that's your business. That that means you just posted something that you can't do any better yet because you're just you, you know you're just learning. Like that that's your best that's your best work that you can do right now. So post it. Be proud of what you did. Yeah, be proud of it. And it takes a very small person to belittle anyone that is posting or doing what they're passionate about. It takes a very small individual, and I don't mean in stature. I mean just mentally and emotionally. It takes a very small individual to do that. So, uh, like Justin saying, you know, that's that's so huge. You know, when there's so many new people that you see, especially on Instagram, that are tying flies, like 
yeah, the flies probably aren't the best, but you know what? That's the best they can do right now. Just like Justin yep. said, that's it. That's it. That's the, that's the best for right now. But if you, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll go ahead. No, dude. You I'll go just, ahead. I was just going to say, you know, it's the same with YouTube's people like, you know, the noise and, you know, you're too much noise. There's not enough, like, you know what? Leave them alone. If that's what makes them happy, let them do them. Like, don't watch it. <laughs> like, I know there's going to be, I guess they call them trolls and stuff like that. And I guess, you know, to me, I always took that and like back to the competitive. I always took that as like if someone complimented me. I hated it. Like I needed someone to like try to insult me or belittle me because I used to take that. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, when I am tying, if someone says something about a fly or something that I tie, sometimes I, like, I kind of switch to that mentality. Well, you know what? I'm going to. And then it's like, hang on. Relax. I'm putting thread on a hook. You know, you know, what am, what am I getting in a battle over Facebook for? Yeah. And, and that's, and that's the toxicity of, of social media that, you know, uh, I know John and I have worked really hard in our circle to, to, uh, you know, eliminate that completely, this, that general toxicity, but also the, the idea that everybody starts somewhere, even the people that yep. are toxic started somewhere. But the funny part is, and I noticed this and, and maybe I overanalyze this a little bit. I tend to be a bit of an analytical, you know, person. Um, the people that throw the insults have nothing to show for themselves. <clears throat> nothing. What? Well, it's like, you know what? Oh. Are you there? Uh, I'm back. Still yeah. here. Okay. That was that was bizarre, dude. Like my everything froze. Ah, uh, little little bit of a thing there. Yeah, and now I'm getting like a million messages. It's like I lost all service on my phone, <laughs> and then literally like everything just came through. But uh, I don't know if you guys paused because you lost me, or you paused because I was about to say no, something. no. I I saw I was about to say something the same time as you did, but you go ahead first. <laughs> Oh, no, dude, you're the guest. <laughs> well, you know, it, I started a TV show. Do I know everything about fishing? Nobody knows everything about fishing, you know? Like, what you guys know might be different from up here, but I'm fishing. But, you know, people say this and that. At least I'm out there trying. At least I'm out there trying. You're, you're sitting at home saying, I can do that. I'm out there trying it. So I, I'll take my lumps, my bumps, my slams, whatever. You know, it, it, it's cool. You know, and people are out there trying and you know it's not only that it's uh you know to backtrack a little bit about those just the people that are rude you know it's it's uh you know what did they build what have they built what do they have to show for it nothing they're they're just wallowing in like this this self-absorption they're ego demons as their buddies on smelly pot uh smelly talk would say ego demons and it's just it's just it's just terrible. There, there's no, well, there's no place for that. Well, no, you don't know what that person's feeling that day. You know, maybe they'll come home from work. They had a shitty day or day or something at their job. It's like, maybe I'll tie a fly, maybe, you know, post a fly or something. And then not only are they getting shit on at work, you know, they're getting shit on at home because of a fly, a fishing fly. <laughs> because of a fake bug. Because of a right. fake bug. It's, 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 it's so bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It really is, right? Man. Yeah, you know, but I think I think that we have a lot of good folks in the community too. And I think there again, the people that don't want to be a, a, a you know, play nice within the community, they go away really quick. You know, that that's one thing I will say is they tend to go away pretty fast and we don't have to deal with them a whole lot. And, and it, it's like they show up, they you know, do whatever troll thing they do. And then they get ran off and it's like, okay, they left, you know, it's like, they're, they're not there anymore or, you know, whatever else. And it's not like it, it's a feelings hurt thing. It's just annoying. That's that it's an annoyance because it's like, what does this have to do with anything that we're doing fishing wise? That's, a, that's what I always ask myself. I'm like, does this hold any relevance to fishing whatsoever? No. Okay. Well, why are, why are we even talking about this? And so I guess if you really like, narrow everything down and you get it cut and and basically as you have those little things come by it's like you just shove them off to the side and keep going yeah no de definitely definitely 
So, you know, we're coming up on our hour here. Um, and, and before we leave, I always like to ask, and, and I, you know, we'll always be talking, what, what are you looking forward to this year? Uh, you know, 2023 coming up here. Um, you know, what, what are you got planned for uh, CB? Oh, I mean, season two, it, we, we just launched the TV show season two and it's, it's already, it's, it's, it's firing up and we're not even out fishing yet. So everyone got to keep an eye out for that. You know, um, just do more podcast, do what I'm doing, you know, maybe, you know, hook somebody new into the, into the sport or something, or tie, teach someone how to tie some flies or just that. That's really it. Right. I, I got a few things I'm working on. Like I got to get my online store set up, you know, fully. So it's up and running. It's nothing huge by any means, but I sell some Norvice stuff and some fly tying materials and stuff like that. It's just, I got to get that fire lit to actually sit on the computer and get the pricing and everything right. But other than that, man, um, I'm open for guiding now. If anyone wants to start booking their trips, they can go to my website, www.cbflyfishing.ca. You can, we can discuss there and yeah, just, you know, have a good time and fish. Absolutely. So outside of your website, uh, for people that want to get a hold of you, how, how can people get a hold of you outside of the website? Well, there's my email, uh, justin.2101 at hotmail.com, where you can just call me or re or reach out to me on social media. You know, yeah. I, I usually an answer all hours of the night, right? If I hear a ping, sometimes I'll wake up now and I'll text straight away, right? Like I see me get up, man. Someone order flies one night when like, I think it was like two in the morning or one in the morning it came through. I get up that night and started tying flies for them so I could have them ready for them when they're going fishing in a day or two. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's dedication <laughs> well you know i i know what it's like too when you want to go fishing or something it's like gee you know i want to make sure they you know i want to make sure they can they got their stuff to go and you know they have a good day and catch a fish you know it's that that that's the best part absolutely so yeah i mean with all with all of that being said uh you know we'll make sure to get some links out and everything else um the podcast, love it. Listen to it every time you got the new episodes that come out and always uh, try to reshare your stuff. So, you know, for our listeners out there, go check out the CB Fly Fishing podcast. Justin's got an awesome podcast. Make sure to also check out his YouTube channel, uh, CB Fly Fishing. I think, isn't that what it is, Justin? Uh, CB Fly Fishing School. C CB Fly Fishing School. That's on YouTube. Uh, you can always get a hold of Justin through all of our stuff too. And it's a, it's a really good way to connect. So, um anyways um john you got anything else no just justin dude this has been incredibly enjoyable i really appreciate the friendship that we've made over the past few months and definitely uh, you're a great dude you do a lot of good stuff for the community especially your local community in cape breton so uh just really thanks for coming on and taking time out of your evening yeah, no problem. Me at any time. Like, you know, I think for the most part, I just kind of rambled on there, but. <laughs> oh, no, definitely not. No, we had a good conversation and Justin, you know, there again, thanks again for coming on. Uh, you know, I know we kind of spun it out a little bit short notice, but really appreciate your flexibility with that and everything else coming on. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to have all of us kind of working together and building our community together over this next year. It's going to be a really good time. We're really looking forward to it, but thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Thank you guys. Like I said, for giving me the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. John, you want to roll down that list of sponsors one more time so people can go spend their money. Yeah, you got it. Everybody, this episode of Working Class Fishing was brought to you by 317 Flies, an Adramus fly company. Um, I lost my paper. <laughs> 317 Flies, lid rig, and now I'm going to look at it. Sure Cure, Naughty Tackle, and CD Fishing USA. <laughs> and Angry Rooster Fly Co. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rocky. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I came in for the save this time, Rocky. Just just thank me later when you listen to this episode. So <laughs> <laughs> anyways, you can find us over on Instagram at Working Class Fishing Podcast, YouTube at Working Class Fishing Podcast. You can also look us up on Facebook at WC Fish. 
And you should be able to find us on all major listening platforms as well. And if you want to be a guest on this podcast, you got a suggestion, make sure to shoot us an email directly over to workingclassfish at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from everybody. And until next time, thank you so much for listening. I hope everybody has a wonderful day.